Hi again, it's Ryan Miller with Ed Interactive, and we're here today to answer the question, how do the new generative AI search engines determine who is the best medical provider in any given market? So we're really interested to explore, well, first and foremost, what exactly do things like ChatGPT, Google's Bard, actually know about you, your medical experience, your credentials, your training, your relative authority on the topic, and pretty quickly we came to the conclusion, and this is uh, perhaps somewhat intuitive, it's just what you force feed them, what it's able to find, locate, and comprehend as it looks around the internet. But more interestingly, and where we spent several months uh, performing research, I have to credit my colleague Shannon, who did the heavy lifting here, was answering the qualitative question, given all the information available on the internet about you and your practice, what are the subjective factors that it appears that both Google and the newer generative AI search engines are placing value on when consumers are asking them who's the best at any particular procedure inside of their market? So in this short presentation, today, we're going to go through just a couple of things. I'm going to give you a framework to think about the types of information that's contemplated by the major search engines, both traditional like Google and the generative AI search engines. From there, we're going to go through kind of the anatomy of a really good presentation of the providers inside of your clinic. And then finally, we're gonna close off with uh, some thoughts on, well, some, some tips that emerged in our analysis that were perhaps somewhat surprising in terms of what's influencing generative AI search engine recommendations today. Let's dive right in and let's talk about the concept of EEAT. Now, um, I realize this probably is not the case, but in my head, you're standing in a sunlit hallway between casework and just asking yourself, how does Google or any of the generative AI search engines, how do they improve the quality of their search results? And of course, you never wonder about this, but it's actually a good question to answer to give you a framework for understanding how to present or put your best foot forward, if you will, online today. So um, Google uses human quality raters. So the... Um, uh, the basic concept here is that they have uh, humans in their employment who follow a specific set of guidelines. It's like a 180 page manual, roughly, that tell them how to spot good versus bad search engine results with each proposed update to Google's ranking system. What's worth noting is that AIs do a very similar thing, only the discriminator, the rater, is actually a second piece of software. Right. The first piece of software in the AI generates an answer. The second piece of software says, does that look like something a human would write? And based on its feedback, the first piece of software refines its answer, getting better and better and better over time. Very, very similar to the older human model employed by Google in this instance. So the EEAT framework is something that appears in that huge handbook, the Quality Raters Guidelines. And it's a principle that's applied when distinguishing um, search results where the stakes are high. In, in the industry, we would call them your money and your life, YMYL. Financial advice or medical advice has generally higher stakes than, say, a recipe for chili. And so they apply a higher expectation when evaluating the search results that come back. The first of those E's is expertise, right? This is the basic um, uh, knowledge of the subject matter and personal experience, right? You've actually done, uh, you've worked in that area. You have firsthand knowledge of the topic that you're writing about. Authoritativeness generally means that your expertise or your experience are recognized and lauded by others, usually in the same industry or others who consume your services. And then finally, that you're trustworthy, that there's no bias slipping in that ultimately corrupts the um, trustworthiness of the content you're going to present on the web. To understand this framework, I actually like to use tax accounting as an example. So let's say you got a guy who lives down the street from you, a neighbor that you're kind of friendly with named Michael, and Michael's a mechanic. Well, it's tax season right now. You probably wouldn't go to Michael for tax advice. But if instead of being a mechanic, Michael had just graduated from a tax accounting program, he's got some fresh knowledge on the topic, the basic expertise that he would need to be able to give some advice or direction, but no practical experience yet. And you might give his advice kind of like his B minus C plus in terms of its validity and value to you if you're having some tax challenges. Now, let's say instead Michael is actually a trained tax accountant with 20 years of experience. Well, now I might put his advice back to you. Maybe he doesn't have specialized knowledge in the tax area that you're having troubles with this year. I might put him in kind of that B plus range. Now, if instead Michael was a trained tax accountant with 20 years of experience who just spoke at a major industry event on the exact topic that you're challenged with right now, 
that authoritativeness where he was recognized by his peers and given a platform to talk on the topic that's relevant to you, suddenly Michael's answer goes to a nice strong A. And if to top it all off, you've been at a couple of barbecues with Michael, he's a nice guy, you're not paying him, so he doesn't have any reason to have a bias uh, in terms of the way that he answers and approaches you, and you just know that you can trust him intrinsically, well, that trustworthiness, now we've got an A plus answer coming back. And that's really the framework that Google is looking at, as well as the major AIs today, right? It's a basic way to evaluate the overall credibility and authority of a, an answer or a piece of content on the web. This is super interesting though. Google didn't add the second E experience until December of 2022. Now, um, worth noting, in November of 2022, well, that's when ChatGPT was released. When suddenly Google says, hey, we need to add an extra little bit of criteria on here to look for quality content, which is the human experience, first person personal knowledge that's gonna make this content uniquely valuable. So if we take all those ideas and we just sort of say, well, let's translate that into what today's best profile looks like. I'll use an example from one of our clients that we've helped rank number one for plastic surgeon in Los Angeles, um, consistently in that number one or number two space. I think it's a good model for what, what we would consider today to be um, table stakes. Because at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is sort of out eat our competition, do a better job of articulating those EEAT factors that set us apart. So in terms of your expert uh, expertise, it's going to be like relevant training. Um, it's going to be memberships and certifications that you've obtained, the experiences, years in practice, the number of surgeries that you perform, and any personally declared areas of specialization or innovation within the industry. Authoritativeness comes when you're given a platform to speak publicly, when you can uh, conduct research and publish that research on the web, when you are recognized and invited by the media to comment in subject matter. And then finally, trustworthiness is going to be uh, industry appointments, service awards, uh, testimonials and patient reviews. All of those things need to come forward like in the example that we just put up on the screen. What was super interesting to us, so there were some outliers. We actually identified over 60 things that seemed to especially impress the AI, the new generative uh, AI search engines that are emerging. And I'm gonna share, we preserve most of those for our clients, but for our followers here on our newsletter, we're gonna share five of those things that were super interesting to us. Um, the generative AI's chat GPT in particular appeared to love celebrity, and big awards. Um, not surprising, uh, the you know because the ChatGPT database is a little bit older. The definition of celebrity may not be a current celebrity, but exposure in media and uh, major national awards appear to weigh heavier in the searches that were recommended for best searches um, on ChatGPT than on, for example, Google and some other uh, sites that were examined. Now, if you will read between the lines here and see if you can fill in the missing word. What was super interesting to us is that the generative AI search engines seem to respond to self-declared specialization, right? I think we've maybe heard the, the saying before that the riches are in the niches, and that appears to be very, very true as it relates to generative AI search results. And individuals who are willing to pigeonhole themselves and declare publicly on their own profiles that they were devoted to a particular set of procedures or area of practice tended to perform better in niche searches, searches where we're looking for uh, a best, uh, say, liposuction surgeon in a particular market. In addition to that, the surgeons who were top rated in the popular generative AIs seem to be more involved in industry, holding leadership roles in types of major organizations that are recognized authorities in their industry, actively involved in researching, or at least at some point in their career, having published in the area in the line with the procedures that we were searching at that particular moment in time. Um, probably my favorite of those 60 plus findings was that the generative AI seemed to be particularly interested in individual doctors who had international connections. Uh, I can't explain this one in particular, which is what makes it fun and surprising, but we noticed that the results that were being recommended by generative AI search engines disproportionately referenced international connections on their profiles, inclusive of international training, international lectures, humanitarian work abroad, or even simply speaking multiple languages. The last thing, and, and I think it perhaps is the most reassuring of all these things, is it does seem that caring still counts, that the surgeons who were top performing in generative AI took great pains in espousing their um, ethos on patient care, talking about their approach to 
um, both the consultation and their bedside manner postoperatively. And exposing these very human factors ironically seem to be, well, important to the robots. So when we bundle all of these ideas together, it's like, well, this is fairly straightforward. This is something I can do. And we agree 100%. This is absolutely something that every provider can do. But there are two obstacles that we've noticed that can get in the way of presenting really an exceptional profile on your website. And usually it's going to be humility or complexity. From the humility standpoint, it's the recognition that sometimes it's hard to boast about yourself which is why having an agency partner who can extract the things that are unique and special and important about your practice and you personally and showcase them in a way that's honest and objective and important to the consumer. The complexity is simply recognizing that some of these things, you know, not everybody keeps their CV up to date. Maybe you don't have the photo from the lab last time that you delivered uh, a lecture publicly at a major industry event. So taking the time to carve out, whether it's an evening weekend or a quiet office hour, to gather those assets that would allow you to portray richly, visually, in a way that's gonna engage with your patients um, exactly what kind of provider you are and how you are connected to the broader world that you, that you practice in is gonna be probably the hardest part in this entire exercise. But the good news is both those things are easy to overcome. If you have questions about our findings or research, please feel, feel, feel free to reach out to us here at Ed Interactive. Again, I'm Ryan Miller. Thanks for your time today.